welcome back all of you nana here in this uh, session uh, we are going to see a back to back make so previously we used to run uh, uh, refresh and start order promising server after collections are completed so that will be basically updating your online memory engine of the planning actually so that is now bypassed from 20 to d so it is no more required so we are going to see about without the refresh and start how we are going to fulfill the customers needs as far as make receive and then ship so let's now go there and then have a look at it so let's go there so in my fusion order management documentation we have one fusion manufacturing setup is there fine let us now double click on it and then have a look at it and fusion manufacturing setup so here i have made a fictitious manufacturing actually a rather a imaginary one uh we are going to manufacture 50 numbers of drum actually from sheet metal so it is going to have six operations fine right? the 10th operation is going to be a sheet metal cutting so we need sheet metal as a material and the cutting machine is required and then this is the equipment which is required for it and then you need a cutter actually fine right? this is a cutter he is a resource actually so once when the sheet metals are cut we will now do the bending on operation number 20 fine right? we are going to do it so sheet metal bending is the operation name and then uh, you need the cut sheets of the previous operation and then the bending machine will be used for bending it actually so it will not bend it as a drum actually fine the sheet metal bender will be doing it so the 30th step is what welding after bending is completed you are going to perform welding so welding rods are required for welding it and then a welding machine is required and then a precision welder is also required as a resource <laughs> so after the welding is completed you are going to pour water on the drum and then see whether any leakage is there or not so what is this testing and then we need water for testing and then we need a tester so if there is any leakage then after the 40th operation you will again come back and then do the 30th so the 30th and 40th will be repeated till there is no leak at all right it long so likewise in a manufacturing what happens the operations will not be what happens the sequential always depending upon certain test results you may even go zigzag on the entire operation sequence and then you will not try to complete everything so after 30 and 40 are iterated and then you will now come to the 50th one we will now perform the grinding and finishing and then a handheld grinding machine is required the grinder is required and then the 60th one is what the painting and finishing <clears throat> and then we will now paint it and then afterwards a spray painter painting is required and then a spray painter is required so i normally used to demonstrate the complete one in a normal manufacturing training <clears throat> but again what happens now uh, we are now doing a back to back to back make only so this six operations are now reduced to only three now right in this back to back make and so i have reduced it like this now so i will now have what happens i will locate three standard operations for my exercise actually so one is the bending and cutting and then uh, we need a resource called a bender and cutter <clears throat> bender cutter is a resource and then i need sheet metal for it and then equipment i am not going to test it all in this exercise i am not going to test anything so equipment i am not testing it so only with the material resource i am going to test it so then the next operation is welding and then you need a welder and then the welding rods are required then painting and finishing painter and paint so i have now reduced the six operations to t for my back to back make actually so now the sales order will be interfacing into manufacturing for making it actually and with these three operations with them okay. so let us now go there and then do it now right? so to perform this what happens you have to first of all do all these setup section right the first setup is what the plant the organization must be enabled for manufacturing actually so manufacturing and maintenance must be enabled so let us now go there and then have a look at it thank you monitor now go to the place one where so let me log in now <clears throat> so we are logging in so we are now going to make it as what as a manufacturing plant so i am now going to work on 002 org now so 002 org is basically enabled for manufacturing and maintenance so let us now go to the inventory manage inventory org task and then have a look at the org <laughs> fine there is a place where you could have a look at it now fine so click on the home icon on the right side top and then go to the setup and maintenance and then we will now have a look at the inventory org <laughs> manage inventory org is the task and remember once when the transaction starts it will not be possible for you to enable the manufacturing and maintenance or or in other words those two fields will be grayed out <clears throat> once when the transaction starts on this so it has been done in the initial phases in fact on every inventory setups everything must be initially set up and later on it will not be possible for many of the inventory setups to be done so manage inventory or so go to the manage inventory or so i go to the manage inventory organization let me go to the 002 or on which i'm going to do it i'm now working on vision actually <clears throat> 002 or i'm going to make a search now thank you on search so organization is what 002 and then give it a tap and then you are know, now searching for it now so once when you search for it to be coming over you know <clears throat> so here i will now go and then edit this right select it and then click on edit it is a atlanta organization you know there to atlanta organization edit it and then since we are working on the vision you will now find the vision entity is coming up over here <clears throat> 
So the business unit is US one business unit. So the profit center business unit also same US one legal entity and then US private letter. Atlanta is the location actually. And already the location R T I is already done now. And click on next. You go there next. So in the next uh, we have you can see that this org is a manufacturing and maintenance enabled. So the additional usages. So organization the manufacturing plant organization is a, performs the maintenance activities also. So it was initially done. So after the transaction has started, these two fields have got grayed out. You will not be able to modify anything at all. So it has to be done at the beginning. Otherwise, the organization will not be a manufacturing plant at all. So we can cancel no fine. So that is not done. <clears throat> so the next step is what you go there. So we are going to go to the manage plant parameters. So manage plant parameter the one. So let's not have a look at it. Now. Click on done and then come out of it. Let's not have a look at the manage plant parameters. <clears throat> So go to this place and paste it over here and manage plan parameters. <clears throat> so the one extra space is there. So manage plan parameters. Go there. Click on it. And then here the org is 002. Fine. First of all, we'll not see whether we are working on 002 org or not. <clears throat> we'll not change the org. So go there. So I already we are working only on 002. It's okay. Go there. So you can even have a separate calendar. So this calendar may be working only for four days or five days in a week. You can even put it up. So the default supply separator is stores, and then upon completion of the finished good, in this case the drum, it will be going into the completed submitter. So go there. So these things are fully explained in the manufacturing training how we are going to do it. So the default pick slip grouping rule has already been explained to you in my order management training. So the order picking we are using it now. So go to this place and go to the next one. Next tab is here the operational sequence system, and then you are going to increment between okay, fine. This is a work definition by which we are doing it now. So click on the third tab region. So this will be basically a plan parameter setup actually. <laughs> the one. So the work orders are going to begin with the W, w work order underscore zero zero two underscore running number. The running number will be running from thousand onwards. Okay. So somebody might have even created it. So it will be having around thousand one hundred or something like that, and you'll be getting it now. <laughs> so here uh, allow quantity changes during backlash. Make it as a both. Now. If you make it as a material, only material can be backlash or resource only done. Fine. Always make it as both. This is a very important one. Okay. So the other setups are already explained fully in a manufacturing training actually. Okay. So we are not going in depth of, depth of it. We'll now go to the fourth tab region. <clears throat> this is the fourth tab region. So this is for maintenance section. This is for maintenance. So the plant parameters has to be set properly before you begin your activity on setting up your other things. Thank you, cancel. So the plant parameters are set up. Then afterwards, what happens? We have to go into the work area and then do it. No fine. We'll now go to the work work area and then define those things. No fine. These things are to be done. We'll go there. Click on it. You know, go to place and click on done and then come out of it. I will now go to the <coughs> supply chain execution and then I will now go to the manufacturing. So click on the supply chain, go to the home icon and then click on the supply chain execution. Now. In the home icon, I'm clicking it. So I go to the supply chain execution now, fine. Supply chain execution, I go there and then I will now go to the work definition. So work definition is the area where we are going to set up the plant as well as we will now create the work definition also finally. Fine, click on it. Work definition is the one. You know, go there, click on it. We'll now begin our work definition activity. <clears throat> so this you can so we're not going up, you know, keep that mobile icon on the top actually. So go there. So it's not coming out there on So we'll keep this mobile icon somewhere like that. So go there, click on it. So the first activity which you're going to do on the 002 org, fine. First of all, you see that your org is 002 or not. Fine. You have to be in the org. No. Otherwise, change org and then change it. So we already, it's already there in 002. Fine, go there. Not. I will not go to the place. I will not go to the what? Manage work area. Fine. Click on the manage work area. So here, I'm not going to create what a work area. <clears throat> so click on plus now. Fine. I will not get a work area. <clears throat> I'm going to get over here. I will not say T01. Fine. It's a testing actually. Fine. T01, fine, is a work area now, fine. I will now say uh, laptop, fine, <clears throat> manufacturing. So laptop manufacturing is a work area. Fine. And then put appropriate name and take away. And then I click on the code now, and then click on the description. <clears throat> then inactive is not okay, fine. Save and close by which all of the work area is not created. So this is a place that we are going to manufacture the laptop. So click on that. So the work area is now created. We will not go there, click on it. We will not go and then create a work center now. <clears throat> So a work area of manufacturing will now have what laptop assembly, laptop testing, and then so many other uh, individual things will be there. Fine. So I will now go to the manage work center. <clears throat> so there we are now going to assemble the laptop. I will now create a <coughs> work center called assembly area. So go there. I will now say it's a T01 <coughs> laptop fine. assembly fine. Well, assembly uh, center. It is the work center actually. 
so go there so is the laptop assembly center one and we'll take off it and then go to the code and then paste it find description also i'm pasting it now so i will now put the work area is what t01 and then give it a the work area supply submittary is stores now stores is supply submittary so go there resources will not do it later now. so now i have now created a work center within the work area so click on save and close is not done now let us know as per the plan we will now create the resources actually so in our plan we are going to have these resources actually so i am not going to have a better cutter resource find that i will not take over it i will not create a better cutter resource better resource and better resource i will not go to the resource so click on it so go to the manage resources and then let us now create the required resources for this exercise actually for a back to back make so we are not doing a back to back make so click on this <clears throat> so i will now choose the t01 everywhere so that what happens will be easy for me to identify and paste it the better cutter so take over it and put the code and put the description now and then it is a basically a labor now and the class is not covered in this training actually fine it is not covered so it is each actually each is not it is not time sensitive actually so if it is going to be time based unit some as like hours minutes or uh, seconds then we can even very well schedule it actually and then i am not going to do the costing also fine there was another so my better cutter resource is now getting created so drop down and then save and create another so we are now going to get next resource so let us now create the next resource on this matter next is what better so we'll not take our better over so i will now say is a t01 underscore and then paste it in the in the better resource and take out of it put in the code <clears throat> put in the description now and i here drop it on is a labor actually and then here it is each each is the one and that so you will not drop down and then save and create another the final resource i am going to create for this exercise is what painter you know over so take out the painter in the place it is the t01 and underscore painter <clears throat> take a copy of it and then put in the code <clears throat> Yeah. and then put in the description now so type is a labor right? so you can even go for equipment also equipment is not chosen for this exercise actually so each and go there save and close by which we are now completed all the things on the t01 actually <clears throat> so you know so click on that and then come out now we will now go back to the work center the work center let us now query the t01 <clears throat> so t01 i have not clicked on the magnifier it will be coming now so once in date probably go there so click on the hyperlink on the work center actually So click on the hyperlink of the. That is the basically edit mode, and the bottom resource is there. Fine, click on plus. Let us now populate all the three resources. So it is the T zero one. Fine, go that one. I will also the vendor cutter. So vendor cutter is one. Fine, go that one. So if you have a capacity planning module, then we have to say how many units of vendor uh, cutters are available. Krishna is a vendor cutter. Rama is a vendor cutter. Like that, what happens? You will be having a physical instance of a resource, so you can put it all available for whatever else. So this is also what this thing. Fine, capable to provide. Fine, go that. So this is used by what happens the planning engine, and then these two are used by the capacity planning. Go there, and then how much of utilization and efficiency again the planning engine will be using it. Go there, add another. So this resource is now added to the laptop assembly work center. Go there. So T zero one. I will now put the welder over here now. Choose the welder. Okay, come on, okay. It is not chosen. And then go there. I will not sit here. It is a mandatory field, and so even though we are not going to use it, but we have to specify this. Go there, add another. So the welder is added. It's not coming on the other side. Go there. I will now add the painter also. And then I will now add the painter. So painter is now getting added. Click on OK now. It's now getting added. So go there. I will now say ten. It is available for labor hours. And then click on OK by which the three resources are now housed in this one. So capacity planning will be using the degree extension as well as your planning engine also will be using the utilization and efficiency degree extension to what happens? Explode the bomb. Bomb bomb explosions will be using those things. So click on seventh course and let's know that. So laptop assembly center is ready now. There's a placement for us. So afterwards, what are we go there? Fine. Having created the work area, work center, and then the resources, and then house the work center. Now we will now create our standard operations. We can even create the standard operations in the spreadsheet that is the lab access. Now I'm going to make it manually. So click on. I'm going to make three standard operations for this one. Right? One is what a bending and cutting standard operation, building standard operation, and then painting and finishing standard operation. So it is standard operation is not a mandatory one. We can even directly put the resource in the work definition actually. But I'm not going to create it. No. It is not a mandatory one. It is optional actually. So manage standard operations. I'm going to do it now. So we are now creating the first standard operation. <clears throat> it is a bending and cutting is the first standard operation. So click on plus one. 
go to the place right? it is the in-house or supplier right so it can even be by supplier also so that will be considered during the osp example right? the manufacturing will be learning about the outside processing so where the supplier will be coming on the standard operations basically okay. p01 underscore <coughs> bending cutting right so bending cutting is the one i don't take over it and then put the code paste it in the description of mine work center is p01 right? with the laptop laptop assembly work center is the one so on coming on. So count point, fine. It will be count point. Count point and automatically transact are basically uh, mutually exclusive, you know, fine. So if it is automatically transacted, it will be getting transacted automatically. The operation will not be waiting for you. Fine. It will be getting automatically transacted. I will not make it as a count point now. Fine. Count point I'm making it now. Fine. So click on it. So these are all allowed. Fine. Go there. So click on plus. And then I'm not going to say this bending cutting operation. How many resources are required? So you may, if you have a separate bender and separate cutter, then you have to add those resources. Otherwise, since we have only one common resource, I will not add it. Fine. Click on plus. So this standard operation of bending cutting will need only one resource for me. It is a T01 and give it up. I have a bender cutter resource I'm going to use it. You click on it. So here, uh, this is basically for uh, lead time management, actually. Fine. Lead time management, I meant to learn actually. So, uh, in fact, what happens? I used to demonstrate lead time management beautifully in e-business basically, but in future, I meant to learn. So, once when I learn it, I will now make a video on this. So, the variable index is coming. So, the usage and inverse is exactly like it is not fine. Today, it is going to be a paint. So, with one kilo of paint, fine. If you go to uh, what happens? Uh, finish a ten uh, spray painting of uh, seven uh, seven uh, laptop cabinets. Then, if you put it seven. It will now say how much is the what is usage per cabinet per per kilo per the for each and every cabinet you need this much of a paint okay fine it normally approximated even up to eight digits actually <laughs> it will be doing it up to eight digits so what happens it will be easy if you if you are having such a complex situation otherwise what happens if you go there and put one fine it will be one one inch <laughs> fine either usage or one it will be so inverse usages will come only when you are having a uh, what happens uh, like this scenario. Fine. With one kilo, we can now spray, spray paint seven uh, desktop cabinets. Then you put seven over here, it will automatically calculate what will be the usage per cabinet actually. Fine. So it will now approximate even eight digits. So it will be getting exact usage. Fine. Scheduling is again what happens is for time management. I'm not doing it. Fine. I don't know what exactly is the principle. And then the charge table is automatic. Fine. It will be automatically charged. Into this. So go there. So the first standard operation is ready. Save and create another. I'm not going to get the next standard operation. <laughs> So next uh, standard operation is building actually. Right? Building is a standard operation. Go there. So let me go on and create another. Is that T zero one? I will now say building. So building is a standard operation which I am going to create. Fine. Take off it. Put on the code. Fine. Put on the description. Work center is what T zero one. Then give it tap. It will be coming over here. So work center is coming. So go there. Is the code point? Fine. So click on plus. The resource I am pressing it. Fine. So it is a T zero one. And this is the building one. Fine. Builder. I'm going to use the welder for this one. Fine. Everything is okay. Fine. Go that one. And then click on what happens. I will look at the final standard operation. Save and create another. The final standard operation is painting actually. Go there. So let me go there. The T01. Fine. Painting. <coughs> so painting is a standard operation. Can take off it. And then put on the code. <coughs> and then put on the description. Go so work surface T01. Go there. So click on plus. And then I will now put the painter resource over here. So for this painting standard operation, I need the painter resource 1901. I will not put the painter over here now. <coughs> painter will be coming. So go there. I will not choose the painter. So, so now all my st three standard operations are created. I will not make it as a count point. I don't know the first one, second one I made as a count point or not. I'm not exactly remembering it. So click on save and close. I will not see the second one. I have a doubt on this one. So T01. <coughs> so click on search now. So the welding one, I will now make an edit now. Click on it. I will now edit it. Yeah. So click on the hyperlink of it and then have a look at it. Right? The count point is on. And so count point is on. Yeah. So, that. so count point is on. <coughs> so the count point is on. Fine with that one. So all three things, the count points are on actually. <coughs> and you can even see those things as additional views. No? Fine. The view column, you can even add it and then see. No? <coughs> so click on it. So count point out of charge. Everything is on now. So now it's all done now. Okay. <clears throat> now wait for the system to what happens? Respond back now. So the screen has got locked and so it's not coming out. Fine. I want you to cancel and then again try to come out. So it's not coming out. Fine. So we have got all the three. So we can even have a view and then go to columns and then see the what your cone point. Fine. Cone point is already on, but it is not visible yet. So show you see some. Yeah, cone point is on. So all the count points are on actually. So click on that. Now, as, as soon as you complete these activities on this page, 
So we have now completed these activities of what? Your works areas, work centers, resources, and sample operations. We have to create a work definition. But before we create the work definition, what we have to have is what? We have to have the items. We have to have the sheet metal as item, building rod as item, paint as item, and then the drum as a finished good. Right? So drum is a column as a parent, and then it will be having these three components. Right? So we'll look at the drum first, and then the sheet metal, building rod, and paint. So all the four items must be created. Now go to the place. So I will now go to home icon. <clears throat> I will now go to the home icon. There, I will now go to what? The product management, and then I go to the product information management. There, I will now create an item. <clears throat> Three, four items I'm going to create. First is the drum. Yeah. So click on it. I will now go on and create the drum. <clears throat> so go to the create item. So let us now create the drum. The items has to be created. Click on it. I will now create the drum. <clears throat> So I'm not going to create in the, uh, what happens your operations master arc, right? The master arc is going to be 0, 0, 0. So let us now put 0, 0, 0 as the master arc. So that will be coming up over here now. <clears throat> so 0, 0, 0 is the one fine operations and then you'll be getting the root data class. Yeah. It will be coming. <clears throat> and then let us accept whatever template is coming. Right? FG design is coming, it's okay. No, no. No, no. So it is the parent actually of the bill. <clears throat> and then I'm not saying it's the drum actually. So let us now name it as what T01 drum. And then we'll now straight away go into the order management area. So since it is a back to back mail, you can have the T01 let's go drum. Drum is the one. So take off it and then go to the description. And then go down. And go to the specification. Fine. The each is the unit submitted is okay. Fine. So the packing sheet is not a fight, it's all okay. So go to the specification, the each is the one. And click on the specifications. Go to the specifications and go to the comment. I will not go to the specifications. I will, go there. I will not go to the sales and order management. <clears throat> I will not go to the sales and order management. Okay. So the customer ordered is item defining attribute, and then a customer order is enabled is listed as attribute. These two things must be on. Not fine, okay. So go there. So now what I'm just using is on. And then these internally transferable and then internal transfer order is enabled must be enabled only for transferring it from other lot. And now we are going to only make another lot. Okay. Go there. So yet on the back to back, what happens? You say make it as yes. So this is a back to back make actually. And back to back make, I'm going to make. Okay. So the one I do, it is shippable as well as invoiceable. Then afterwards, what happens? You go to the planning now. Thank you for the planning. In the planning, <coughs> what happens? You go there. And then this is going to be make item for the make or buy. I'll not make it the make. Make or buy is a make. And then here, bottom, you go there. The planning time runs is 50 days. That means what? If customer or wants any material between the today and the next 50 days, it will all be, what happens? Uh, balanced, basically. The demand and supply is going to be balanced for this. Otherwise, what happens? It will not do a planning. So make a planning time frame as a very high days. So that what happens? The next 50 days of sales orders, requested date will be honored actually. The planning method is MRP planning. It's okay. And go there. So the one. And then go to the purchasing. And then even though we are not going to buy it, fine. I have a habit of giving a list price. Fine. So list price is the one. Fine. I'm not saying one dollar. Even though we are not going to buy it, we're going to make it now. Fine. Doesn't matter. So for a back to back buy, it will be a very important one. So, so all these things are done. If you go to the manufacturing area, <clears throat> so go to the first tab of manufacturing. Here, nothing is required us. So the item is now created and it is a back-to-back -back item. In this place, what I mean is a back-to-back -back item. So in the sales and order management, what you have done is what? Back-to-back -back is yes sector. Fine, very important. Go there. So let us now assign it to the zero zero to all. Fine, go to the associations and then let us now assign it to the zero zero. So the parent is a back-to-back -back matter. Whereas the components will not be a back-to-back. -back. Only parent will be a back-to-back. -back. Enter in now, uh, uh, select it, and then click on apply, and then click on done. So by which, what happens is all done. <clears throat> so, not so the parent, which is a drum actually, is now getting created on the master, and then assigned to the 002 R. So let us now go there, and then create the building rod. <clears throat> so the next is what? Building rod is going to be So the next one is building rod. So once the first item is now created, building rods, and then afterwards, sheet metal, and then paint. These are the three materials which are required. We need what sheet metal, welding rods, and paint as the material required for manufacturing the drum. I will not go there. I will not first of all get the sheet metal. <clears throat> so click on create it up. So go to the create it up. So I will now again create it in the master 000 and then assign it to 002 R now. So go there. So I will now put the master of the rod 000. This is an operations R. <coughs> so let us put it and we'll accept it. So the template is now applied. No, no, okay. <clears throat> so item class is good item class. Okay. okay. Sometimes people uh, uh, fiddled around and then if it is not coming as upload, use some other item class now. So go there. With the T01, go there. With the sheet metal. 
హీట్ మెటల్ ఐటమ్ అండ్ సో టేక్ కాపరేట్ అదన్న అప్పుడు మనం డిస్కషన్ మనం ఈ గోల్డ్ స్పెసిఫికేషన్స్ లో మనం స్పెసిఫికేషన్స్ హియర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ అ నార్మల్ సింపుల్ ఐటమ్ ఫైన్ ఇట్ ఇస్ అ నార్మల్ ఐటమ్ అండ్ సో బ్యాక్ టు బ్యాక్ విల్ నాట్ బి ఎనేబుల్డ్ ఫర్ దిస్ ఐటమ్ ఇన్ వన్ ఆఫ్ సేల్స్ ఆర్డర్ మనం యు విల్ నాట్ హావ్ ద బ్యాక్ టు బ్యాక్ ఎనేబుల్ ఇట్ ఇస్ అ కాంపోనెంట్ యాక్చువల్లీ సో drum is a parent and then is a component it will not be enabled actually you will not go to the association straight away and then associate fine we don't have much of a work on this no fine so it is a simple component and go to actions and then go to self connect so the sheet metal is a component actually you know this is a 002 operating you know it is fine select it and then click on apply and then click on done so by which what happens my second item out of four items is now created drop it down save and close next is what building rod <coughs> then the third item so we are going to get the third item of this okay so drum is created the sheet metal is created now we are going to get the welding rod and then the paint also so click on it and now go on and create a item <coughs> so click on create item so i am now going to create what two more items which is required <coughs> so your drum is now created and then the sheet metal is created now welding rod is going to be created <coughs> we are going to get what welding rod because the so welding rods and then paint are the two more items that are required Right, choose the master or go here. <coughs> so click on OK. So the template gets applied. So we are now applying the template and then taking it to the next level. I will now say P01. I will now say building rods. Building rods is the item. So take a copy of it and then put it in the description. Simply go on and associate with the child. <laughs> Nothing else to be done now. It is not a back-to-back remember. Only the parent will be a back-to-back enabled. The remaining will not be back-to-back enabled. And click on select my account. And then go there. It is a 0-0-2. Even the planning templates is okay for us. No, fine. It doesn't matter. For the component, the system does not look at the planning templates. Only for the parent, it will now look at the planning templates. So go to this place. Save and close. Okay. And the building out. And then the final one is the paint actually. So these are the four components. One is the parent and the three components which are now getting created out of this. <clears throat> Okay, let's go on it. <coughs> Click on create. So we are now going to create item now. Click on it. No create item. Go to this place. No create item. Okay. Is it 000? The final item of paint is now getting created actually. The final item of paint is now getting created. Item class is now created. So click on okay. So we are now going to get the paint now. So go there. Put the P01 underscore paint. Fine. The paint is the one. Fine. Take off it. And then put the description. So let us now go to the associations. Then let us now see the child. Associations. And then go there. So go to actions. And then go to select that. So we are going to associate the child. Put the 002 or child. Select it. And then select it. And then click on apply. <clears throat> and then click on done. So all the four items. So three components and one parents are now created. So now we are going to make a bill. let us now make a bill <clears throat> so the next activity is what to create a bill actually so to create a bill what happens if i am in the vision is okay if you are working on some other some other org actually fine it is not a vision org so what you have to do is we have to add the function security and data security also okay come sir i will show you where exactly we have to add before you create a bill bill is nothing but a structure here so before you create a structure we have to go there click on it go to the manage item class so click on it I'm going to go to the setup and meta means. I'm going to search now. I'm going to go to the manage item class task. Every task is a setup task. So manage percentage. Okay. Item percentage. Class percentage. I'm going to go to the manage item class. <clears throat> so go to the manage item class. So I'm working on the root item class. So which I'm going to edit now. So normally this much of hierarchical uh, classes will not be used. Another way you use a product. Only product will be using a hierarchical classes actually. Select it and then click on it. Otherwise, normal supply chain will not be using much of these classes actually. Sometimes people use it for report making actually. Okay. I will not go to the item management. In the item management, you can now see that it is user defined, user defined, and then no tick mark on the enabled new item class. Otherwise, what am I going to be doing for approval actually? So nothing like that. It should be user defined, user defined, and then no tick mark. So go to the security defined, click on the security. In the security, we will now give a function security and data security actually. <clears throat> so let me go to the query mode and then query may or not. So click on the query mode. So 002, let me query it now. So 002 is R. And I will now say it is a product data steward. 
product and then query it up and product class you have to so if you go on and query it it is already made actually since it is a vision you are already having it otherwise we have to make an entry for your all right this is called function security so having made an entry here what you have to do is you have to go down and then make what an action so select all the actions actually you have to go there so for this one product data secret of 0 0 to actions you go there go to actions and then go to select match so here what you do is you select every action you go there so click on search it will not show you a list of so many actions so here if by the by the side of the actions what happens there will be a what is a, a square bot button of the daba so click on the daba by one go all the actions are getting selected and then click on apply and okay right since it is already done i'm not doing it now so you select all the actions so this is called the data security i will not give a cancel so the function security and data security for every org must be there then only what happens you'll be allowed to create a structure so in vision everything is automatic so otherwise, what happens if you are moving it? So if you make a, because nowadays they are not changing this philosophy. Whenever you create it, they are now adding this function and data security automatically in some instances actually. So you go on and see, if it is already there, no need to do it. Otherwise, what happens, you have to have an explicit function security and data security defined. Otherwise, if you go to the product management, you will not be able to create a structure actually. Item can be created, but structures may not be created. And you need a product data steward role also. So the role for the user also is required. And all these things you have to what happens, uh, dynamically see about how your production instance is behaving actually. <laughs> go to place. I will now go to the browse items and then let me go and then query my drum. So there is a back-to-back -back enabled item, there is a parent for which we are now going to create a bill actually. A structure we are going to create. So go, go to the browse items and then go there. I will now say is a T01 underscore <coughs> DR. And then I query it. It will now come automatically. So the first line is a master arc. The second line is a child arc. You can see, right? I will now click on the hyperlink on the master arc. Right? You go there. Let us now go on and create a structure first. So the first line is 0, 0, 0. Second is 0, 0, 2. Fine, go that one. I will now go to the structures. Structures is nothing but a bill now. I click on the structures. And then here, I am now going to get a structure. <coughs> go to the place. Fine, go to actions. And then what happens? Go to create. Fine. We are now going to create a structure. Actually. Fine, click on create. We will be creating a structure. Actually. So go there. So drop down, the name of the structure will be coming. I will now use the primary one. Not fine. There are plenty of names there. I will now put this as a description also. And take off it. And then put the description. Not fine. And then click on apply and add details. Fine. By which we are going to add the component. Not fine. This is a, the is a, drum is the parent. And then I'm going to add the components. Fine. Apply and add components. I'll be adding the component. Of what? All the three components I'm going to add. Fine. Sheet metal, welding rod, and paint. I'm going to have this. Well. So go to actions. And then go there. Select and add. So we're going to select and add, and then we're going to add it. So go to actions, and then go to select and add. So I'll go there and then query. Fine, T01, let us now query it. And click on search. We're going to query it. So once we query it, what will be doing? Fine. So I will now select it, and then with the control, I'm going to select all the three. Fine. By one go, we can select everything with the control key. With the left-hand side, what happens? I'm selecting it. So your welding rod, sheet metal, and it can be in any order. doesn't matter. I click on apply, and then click on apply. The order doesn't matter. So the bill is now ready. The bill is ready. <coughs> So we are now completed creating a bill in the master arc. <coughs> so go there. So click on done by which the bill is ready. So the primary drum is the primary, and then what happens? We've got three components. Now, right? So you can even see the names of the components, right? Paint sheet and So click on done and then save and close. Now on the secondary, on the child org, what you have to do is you have to common it to this. Right? Go there, save and close. So on the child org, we will not we will not create a bill, but we will now common it to the master. It is a customary practice. So once when you common it from the master, I will not go there, I will not click on it. So here, once when you common it to the master, what will happen is that whenever you make a change on the master, it will be getting reflected on the child. So you will not be able to make a change on the child at all. And go to the structure. And then here, the bill is normally common from the master actually. Go to actions. And then here, what happens? The create from common. So go to this create from common. <laughs> so we are going to common it. And go there. So the bill is already available in the operations or, And then from there, I will not query the bill number. I will not put it as operations or. Operations is R, you know, that's not. and then the bill is what there's only one bill we have created in the operations or starting in T1 now, find T01. If you put T01 and then give it a, the T01 you will now find only one bill which is available and go there. So click on OK. Now an item import process will be triggered now. If you want to know. Now it will be triggering an item import. So once when the item import is completed, what happens is no published and submitted. So 518 is the one you know, now go and have a look at the item import. So click on the star icon here now. So click on the star icon. <coughs> I'll go there and have a look at it. Go to the mod process. 518 is item import actually. So that's the only. So whenever you're commoning it, 
what happens an item import concurrently will be running. So once it is completed, you'll not see that what happens. Item import is a one by one item not running. It'll not run some six or seven concurrent simultaneously. So once when everything is completed, then you cannot see that the common bill is created on the child. And remember, common bill cannot be modified for any components as well as quantities also. And nothing can be done as well. So go to this place like that. So let us now give a save and close on this now. You already commented it. Your structure is no made. No, it's not coming. So once when the import is coming, the structure will be available. <laughs> To go that way. So click on save and close by which what happens is not completed. So we have to wait for the what happens there, the monitor process to complete now. Fine. So go there. So item import child has to run now. Fine. Okay. So we'll now wait for some time till the item import gets completed now. <coughs> Running. So let us now wait for it. So the item import child has got succeeded, but the item import is still running now. Fine. So it will not take some more time actually. So it will not take some time. So in the meantime, we will now keep a stock of five in our organization so i'll not go there so i will not click on the home icon i will not keep a stock of five for this i will not keep a stock of five <coughs> so click on the home icon and then i go there i will not go to what inventory management i will not go to the inventory management <coughs> the supply chain execution level i will not go to what supply chain execution supply chain execution and go to the inventory management let me add this as a favorite over there now Again and again, come over here and then search for it actually. So, it is the inventory management. So, there, let us now keep a stock of five on this one. Go to the favorites and then let us now add it. Now, it is now showing as a 001. I will now change the order to 002. Now, fine, we are now working on 002 now. I click on the favorites and then let me add to the favorites. Click on add to favorites. So, go that. I will now make it as what inventory overview. Now, fine, it is INV overview. I am making it. Like that. So, click on save and close. So, let us now keep a stock on the second org actually. So go to this place. There is no data access required for the visions or when everything is automatic actually. So go to the create miscellaneous transaction and then change the org to 002. We have to change the org to 002. So we are in 001 now. Fine. So click on change org. Let us now change it to 002. <coughs> 002. Fine. Click on OK. It is now given. The org is given. Then again, we have to go to the create miscellaneous transaction. Fine. Once the change org is now completed. You click on it and then again go. Now the org is now coming as 002. So click on create miscellaneous transaction. So we are now going to get a miscellaneous transaction for this one. I will now say is the MISC and then give it a tag. Is the miscellaneous result I will now the miscellaneous result. I will now populate an account over here. Drop it down. I will now populate an account over here. Click on it. So click on search now. So click on search. I will now populate an account over here. So the account is going to be popular. I'm not choose another account. This is basically an offset account which will be given by the financial team. So click on again. The offset account is now set. I will now receive the drum only. Fine. The drum as well as the other components also will be given. So I will now keep other components also sufficient. Because the components are going to be consumed actually. Thank you for this. So click on plus. I will now keep all the components also. I will now say three zero one drum is the one. So the drum to the T01 underscore DR and then give it a, the item will be coming on the second door. And the 0, 0, 0, 0. So it is not visible. I will not expand it. I will not keep it in stores. It is a supply sub inventory for us. So go to stores and then I will not keep only five. Now I am not going to, I want the customer wants 12 and then you will not see what how the manufacturing is getting triggered on this one. The customer wants 12. We have a stock of only five on this one. I click on plus one. <coughs> So next is what the sheet metal T01 underscore yes sketch and then give it a is a sheet metal now. Sheet metal. I will now keep them stores again. <clears throat> then I'm going to keep sufficient quantities. So the sheet metal are all components of a parent actually. I'm not keeping sufficient quantities on this one. So click on plus. So building rod is the next one, and then the paint is the next one. So the remaining components we are having sufficient quantity, whereas the parent, the drum, which is the finished good, thank you that I'm not having only. Uh, minimal now. Only five quantities are available. So welding rod is there. What is it? E01. Ah, WEL. Percentage. It is a welding rod. Very <coughs> correct. Choose it and click on OK. And then populate the sub inventory as stores. Now. Drop it on and then choose it as your stores now. Stores. And then I will now keep again thousand quantities for this one. So thousand quantities will now put 
city sometimes. So finally, the paint is going to be kept over. I'm going to keep the paint over. So T01, I'm going to say paint is going to be happy. So the paint will be also be having problems. So everything is in each as a unit, but it will be in kilos or nothing, no? in reality. Fine. We are only simulating a thing, no? a back to back unit. So the drum is having only five commodities, fine, click on set. Now, this information of what item creation and then the stock has to be collected. So before you collect it, what you do is you go to the you go to the home icon at the top. And go to the home icon. And then before you collect, probably you go there, go to the home icon, and then you go to the supply chain planning. You go to the supply chain planning. I belong to the supply chain planning. <coughs> supply chain execution, the supply chain planning is here. There, here I will now go to the plan inputs. So go to the supply chain planning and then go to the plan inputs. And then I will now go and then query your source system actually. So go to the price, click on it. I will now go to the manage planning source systems. So go to the manage planning source systems. Maybe. So manage planning source systems. Maybe. Here your organization has to be enabled for collection actually. Your organization has to be enabled for collection. And then that is for OPS actually. OPS is the one which is used by your order management actually. And self then go to the manage organization list. And then here, if you are creating your own or click on refresh organization list first and then query for your org. Then only it will be coming over here. I will not say organization starts with a zero, zero. So click on search and find my organization is zero, zero, two. Fine, just ensure that zero, zero, two is enabled for collection. So whatever your org, you have to first of all enable for collection and then save and close. So my Atlanta is now enabled for collection. I will now give a cancel and then come out of it. So we have made an entry on the managed planning systems into the new org. Now we are going to collect your item and on and on. We are now going to make a collection of an item on our end. <clears throat> I will now go to the placement click on it. We will now collect an item on our end. So go to the collect planning data. Fine. I will now go to the collect planning data. And then here, I am now going to collect my item. Fine. But first time when you are doing it, you have to collect all now. Fine. So we have to perform a collection of all actually. So go there, click on it. I will now go to the collect. So first time you collect all. And then afterwards, next time, specific collections is correct. And OPS and go there, click on I will now go to the target. So the first time you collect all, fine. as soon as I'm doing it for the first time, I will now collect all. It will not take approximately 15 to 20 minutes now, fine. I will now wait. And then the next time onwards, what happens, what do you do when you collect it, fine, go to the item and then bring it to the right hand side. And then you go to the supply planning data and then bring the on-end to the right hand side. But one collection should have been for all actually. On-end can be it. So for one collection, so since I'm doing it for the first time, what I will do is I will not, it will not take some time, I will not pass the recording actually. Bring everything to the right hand side. Bring everything to the right and then go to the supply planning data also. Bring everything to the right. Once we are to do everything, okay? no, already done. So go to this place, supply planning data, bring everything to the right side. So let us now perform a collection of all actually. Okay? Everything is now getting collected. And then afterwards, what happens next time onwards, we can selectively collect actually. Okay. Everything is selected. The supply planning data is being collected. So this is now going to take approximately a long time, fine, 20 minutes, fine, click on submit. So let me pass the record and then wait for the collections to complete. So go there. And also submitted. So let me wait for the collections to complete. So the last set of entries for the collections for a complete collection is what, or maybe a partial collection or complete collection is what? Worker to delete state data. And that will be the last one. So in the meantime, what we'll do is we will now try to go on and make a search of this one. We'll now go to this place. We'll click on the home icon. We'll click on that and then come out of it. We'll now go to the home icon. <clears throat> So let us now go to the home icon. And then this place, I will now go to what? Your uh, uh, supply chain planning. So I will now go to the supply chain planning and then go to the planning. Put some, let us now query your item whether it is now collected or not. So my drums and then the components should have been collected by now. T01. And then I click on search. And once it is collected, then only it will be visible over here now. <clears throat> it is not yet collected. So we have to wait for this concurrence to come because the load entity has to get completed. The load is responsible for loading it actually. So in the meantime, what I will do is I will now do the work definition actually. Fine, the load is now running. Let us now go there and then do the work definition. Give a cancel. So the work definition has to be done now. Fine. So click on the home icon. I will now go to what supply chain execution and then I go to the work definition. So I will now go to the work definition. Let us now complete the work definition for this item actually. I will now go to the place organization 002 and go there, click on it. I will now create the work definition. Go to the manage work definition. You go to the manage work definition, <coughs> go there, click on it. Click on plus. Click on it. So for the drum, I'm going to make a work definition. So click on plus. So go there. Item is what? 
T0, T01 and then get tap. So it is a drum will be coming. I will not choose the drum over here. So D01, I will not choose the drum. For the parent, I am not going to get a work definition. Thank you. So once we do it, fine. Once when the item import for your this thing is completed, fine. You will now find the structure name primary is coming. Fine. If the item import, fine, for commoning, if it is completed, it will become otherwise it will not come at all. Nothing will be coming in the list of values. The drop main, I will know what happens. I do main as a member. Fine. There will be multiple things are available here. Fine. I will now go there. Click on it. M E I and then give it app. Fine. I'm going to choose the main one. I'm going to choose the main one. The main will work choose. Then go there. So click on it. I will now click on next. <coughs> So click on next. So I am now going to create the work definition for it. Thank you. So I will now add all the three operations for it. Click on plus. Let me add all the three operations. So click on it. So the code is what? T01. First is the bending cutting operation. So bending cutting operation is the one. And click on OK now. So we are not going to find the in-house operation. Find the result of okay. Nothing is changed actually. Lead time is not given. So click on plus. The bending cutting is not completed. Then afterwards, what happens? Go there. So next is welding operation. Go tap. So I'm going to use the welding operations first. So welding operation is not done. Click on OK. <coughs> the welding operation. And click on plus. And then I will now use the painting operation, the third operation. So T01. I will now choose the painting operation. So painting operation. And click on OK. It is not done. So after having added all the three operations, if the reference is coming, that means what the standard operation. And if not there, it's a single resource also. Can. So go that one. I will now go to the next one. And then we have to associate the appropriate elements. Fine. We have got three elements or one. We have got what about a sheet metal, a welding rod, and then the paint. So these elements will be added to the respective operations. So click on save and edit now. We are now saving and editing it. So we are going to the next step now. So we are going to go to the next step. <laughs> So there, we will now associate the respective elements, the components to the respective operations. Basically. So that is what we want. So by which the work definition gets completed. Actually. So the work definition is now getting completed. So here, the bending cutting operation for which we need the sheet metal. So let me drag and drop the sheet metal for the 10th operation. Click on it, drag it, and then drop it on the sheet bending, bending cutting. So sheet metal is required on the bending cutting operation. And that is getting dropped. So it will not drop. And you can now see the sheet metal will be having a tick mark now. So once it is dropped, we will be getting it. So for the welding, we need the welding rods. Fine. You drag it and drop it. So a tick mark will be coming. That means what? It is allocated here for a particular resource or a particular operation actually. So drag the welding. And then what happens? We put it on this place. Right? Welding, welding rod is not putting on the welding. Rod. So the second operation is now having a material. So that will also be having a tick mark on this. <clears throat> and then finally, the paint. So drag and drop the paint. And the welding rod is coming. So drag and drop the paint on the 30th operation. So by which we are now completed the creation of a work definition actually. With all three things. Here is not visible actually. Fine. So if you make it less, less, what happens it will be visible now? Less, less, less. Ah oh, God. It is not still visible. <laughs> this is not basically hiding it actually. It's okay. So we are not done it. When you click on save and close, by which what happens? Your work definition is now complete, which is having the operations along with the resources as well as the items. Right? The resources and items have been done. Now We'll now go there and then we will now see in the monitor process. We'll now see how far it has not got completed. And loading is now going on now. Load entity. So once when the load is completed, it would have got loaded actually. <clears throat> so it's still running now. Fine. Go there now. <clears throat> so we'll now go to this place. I will now click on the home icon and then I will now go to the plan inputs. I will now go to the plan inputs. So I will now go to the supply chain planning. I will now go to the supply chain planning. And then I go to the plan inputs now. Fine. Click on the plan inputs. So in the plan input, I will now go there. <clears throat> I will now query for the item point T01. We'll now see whether the items are collected. If the collection is completed, you'll now be able to see the items available in the plan area. So it has to be available in the plan area. Still, it is not in collection. So we have to wait for some more time. Actually. Now, when I made a search, fine, if you go there and then made a search, I now click on the search. Now I'll now feel everything is now available in the planning area. Actually. So the drum is there, sheet metal is there, and you'll have a paint and then the, the building lot, everything is there. On the 002 org and then 00 org. Or, or. So it is all available. Now let us now perform our uh, GOP setups for this one. So click on the home icon. So let us now perform the GOP setups for this one. Uh, we will go to the order management area. And go to the order management and then I go to the global order processing. So the, there are three setups which are required for this one. Thanks for the global order modeling. So order management, glo order management, and then I go to the global order processing. 
in the global order promising, we'll be having three setups which you have to make. One is the ATP rule. So go to the order management and then go to the global order promising and then let us now make the ATP rule first. So the first activity is to make ATP rule. So click on it. And then in the top, we'll be having manage ATP rules. <clears throat> so go to the manage ATP rules. Now I'm going to make a supply chain ATP rule. Let us now make a supply chain ATP. I will now say T01. I will now say ESC underscore ATP rule. It's a supply chain ATP rule. I mean, it is easy to do. So, <coughs> supply chain ATP rule. So, take copy of it and then put the description. <laughs> so, go there. So, here or other, I have to make a whatever is a plus. Now. Click on plus. I'm not going to create it actually. Then click on plus. I'm not going to query it. So, put in the name and then put in the description. And then here, search for the components and resources. You enable it. And then enable the, or rather the profitable to promise as well as the respect allocation. So normally it is normally enabled actually. You enable all of them. And then here on the supply type, you enable whatever is applicable for you. Usually what I mean, you enable everything. Everything is enabled. And then this also demand also you could enable. And then this will be taught in a, in a planning training actually. So here what you do is you make it as a user defined and then make it as 50 days now. <clears throat> user defined in the 50 days. And then 50 here. Everywhere 50, 50. This will work fully, but this will be fully taught in a, what's called your manufacturing training and in a planning training. So go to this place. I'm also going to go to That's it. Fine for that. So on the supply chain availability search, we are not selling. So it is not a lead time based or it is not an infinite plan. We are not choosing this radio button now. And then I go to the ATP rule assignments. I go to the ATP assignments. And then let us now add all the components. Okay? The parent and components, everything has to be added. So go to the actions and then get add rule. So all the parent and components must be available over here. Now, fine, drop it down. I will now go to the item and organization. The organization is 002. <coughs> so here is the T01. I will now add all the components and drop it down. Drum and then the, all the parent and all the components must be added over here. On the uh, assignment area, we had to add everything. So go to this place. <coughs> so drum is the one thing on it. So likewise, we had to add one by one. Drop it down. Item and organization. It is 002 part. So drop it down and then choose 2001. So the second one is going to be added. Let's click on search. So go there. So T01. <clears throat> so click on search. So all the three components we had added. So drum is added. Paint, I will now add it. And click on OK. And then click on process. <clears throat> so two more components also has to be added. So all the parent and components must be having an entry over here. Only the parent is a back to back item, remember. The parent is only a back to back item. The remaining are all normal purchased item template or some normal item actually. So click on search. <clears throat> Go there. Is that T01? And then I click on search. No searching for it. So paint is added. Sheet metal, we are going to add it. We're going to add it. And then I click on plus. This will be uh, forming part of a, what's called an ATO model. Right? When you are going to manufacture an ATO model, then these components are normally required. Fine. So in a normal back-to-back -back make also, it is preferable to add all the components also. But on the ATO, it is a must actually. If it is an assembled order model, then it is a must actually. Fine that we are going to see it in the coming week actually. Fine. We are going to see a configurator in which we are going to assemble a model. We are now going to configure the model and then assemble it actually. That is what you are going to do. So go there, drop it down. So sheet metal is there. <clears throat> then drum, paint, sheet metal. Go there. And then building rod. Final one is building rod. Then click on search and add the final item. So go there. The T01. <clears throat> so click on search. In the building rod. So we have now added everything. So for a simple make to back to back make, this may not be required. Right? Apart from the uh, what I mean, the finished good, these three things may not be required, but I'm not very sure about it. And I've forgotten actually. I did it long time back. So more than one year back, I did it. So on an ATO model, I know that it's very much required. For a simple back-to-back -back make, I'm not very sure about it. So click on save and close. But an ATO model means it is a, all the components are required. Thank you. So go to the save and close. So it's all done now. So the first activity of what? Creating your ATP rule is now complete. Now we'll not go there. We'll not do a sourcing now. Right? Go to the manage sourcing rules. Let us now create two sourcing rules for this exercise now. Right? Thank you. Plus now. One is what? Make it. Fine. I will now say a T01. I will now say make at. Zero, zero, two. Always write the name of the sourcing rules very meaningful so that you can easily understand about what the sourcing rule is going to do. So take off it and put the description. Paste it. It is going to be a local sourcing rule. 
is going to be manufactured locally. Zero zero to the one. So in this org, I'm going to manufacture it. So click on plus now. Fine. <clears throat> it is a local sourcing code zero zero to org. Fine. Plus and then the effective date will be coming now. So click on the plus. You'll now find the effective date coming. And then here we're going to add it. Now. So we're going to manufacture it in zero zero. Fine. Go to actions and then go to add a row. And then here we're going to manufacture it. <clears throat> so go there, drop it on. I will now say make it. So make it. Yeah. So put the org as make it. And then allocation percentage is going to be 100. And then rank is 1. Fine. By which, what happens? Uh, we are now made a make it sourcing rule. Now. So click on what? Save and close. Now. Fine. Click on save and close. Do not go and then save and create another actually. Fine. That is not working properly. Give a save and close and then create another. Fine. That way you do it. Now. We had a small bug actually there. So click on plus. Now, now I am going to ship it to customer. Now. Okay. So T01. I will now say transfer to customer actually. So we are going to, once when it is made, we are going to transfer it to customer actually. Go there, I will not make it more time. So take copy it and then put it in the description. So this is going to be what happens as a global rule now. When transfer to customer is a global, but as a make cut is a local now. So it is a global actually. If it is a global organization, will be grayed out actually. So click on plus now. I am going to get the sourcing code. I then click on actions and then go to add row. So here I am going to transfer it. So go there, I will not say transfer, transfer. Transfer from organization is what? Zero, zero, two. From 0, 0, 2, you transfer it to customer. That is what it is. Allocation of 100 and rank is 1. So by which what happens? We are now completed creation of both the sourcing rules. So both the sourcing rules are now completed. We will now do the final setup on the GOP. And that is the assignment set. We will now go to the place. Fine. We will now go to the manage assignment sets. <coughs> and then here, we are going to get the assignment set. We we'll go to the manage assignment sets. Fine. Click on fine. Let me create my assignment set. In reality, there will be only one assignment set, remember. In, in test purposes, here, plenty of people have created so many assignment sets. Right? Assign underscore set. Right? Give us save. So we are going to have two entries for this. So assignment set is now created and then saved actually. And click on plus no point. We're going to add two entries. One is what? Item organization. There is a top one. Right? This is a top priority. It will now execute this first. Then afterwards, next, 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 it will now keep on executing. So this is a top priority. It will now execute this first. In the place. And then here, I will not choose the organization is what? 002. The item is what? T01. And then drum. No. DR. No, give it a, drum is the one. So with this, I am going to manufacture it at what? Use the sourcing rule. And then go there. Put T01. And then give it a tap. I will not choose that what? Make it 002. Is the one. So this line will now manufacture the product. And then bring it to 002. So once when the manufacturing is completed, the finished good will be RH having on this place. Thank you. Plus no fine. I will now add one more. One more assignment level. So after having completed this, it will now go on and search here. Anything is there, anything there, nothing is there. It will now go to the item. Item is always for shipping to the customer. Actually. And go to the item. Item is for shipping to the customers. And go there. So item, I will now put the item. It's a T01. And go tap. So it's a drum. I'm going to choose it now. I will now choose the drum now. So item is drum. Go there. I will now put the sourcing rule over here now. So drum is now chosen. Fine, click on OK now. The drum is chosen. So sourcing rule. And then here I'm not going to use it for what transfer to customer. So T01 is going to tap. So I will not choose the transfer to customer. The transfer to customer. So by these two operations, the item will be manufactured on 002. It will be brought into the completed submitter on 002. And then finally it will be shipped to the customer. So the assignment set is now complete. And go there, save and close. So go to the save and close. So after having done everything, what you have to do is you have to set up a profile actually. You can cancel now. I now set up a profile. <clears throat> you click on the home, the top icon, the name icon, and then go to the setup and maintenance. So go to the setup and maintenance. And then here, what I'm going to do is, <coughs> I will now set up the profile now. Right? It is the admin profile which I'm going to set now. Right? Set up and maintenance. Let us go there and then set up the admin profile. <coughs> so go to the place, right? Click on setup and maintenance. So go to the search now, find search. And then I will now go there. I don't know how it is. It's a manager admin profile. So go to the manager admin profile. Manager admin profile. Click on it. There's the other one. You're going to use it now. So go to the manager admin profile. So there, I will now query for the MSP default. It is the MSP percentage. Right? Default percentage. So MSP default is the one. I will now query for it. MSP default is the one. So here, I'm not going to change the site level profile to my assignment set. Now. Fine, drop it down. I will not choose it for, for my assignment set. Fine, T01 assignment set. So this will be used by the MSP. Now, fine. So the global order promising is going to use this assignment set. 
for your orders. Fine, MSP default assignment set has been changed to our assignment set. Thank you, Vansai. Now we have to collect this again. Fine, this also has to be collected. All the GOP setups has to be collected. We will now see the previous one whether it has got completed or not. Thank you, search now. So the worker to delete stage data is the last concurrent, last set of concurrents. So go there. So worker to delete data has got succeeded. So that means what? The previous collection is not got succeeded. Now we will now collect this also. We'll go to this place. Let us now go to the home icon and then I will now go to the supply chain planning and then plan inputs and then let us now collect this also. We'll go to the supply chain planning. <coughs> I will now go to the supply chain planning <coughs> and then go to the plan inputs and then let us now collect this global order promising setup. Set. Click on it. Now go there. <coughs> we'll now go on and collect. We'll go to the collect planning data. Then we go to the planning data. So we are now going to collect the planning data. So it's not still running. So one thing is coming. Make it always OPS and then this is the targeted. Do not go for a net change. Remember, net change was giving problems for us. So go there. So here, I have now created the item definition also. So for which, what happens, I will now say the item structures. Now. Bring the item structures over here. So the work definition will come automatically over here. Item structure is coming. So it's not coming. So let us not put the item also here. Item. So work definition is already coming. Item also. So items, item structures and work definition. Along with that, what happens, you know, choose order orchestration reference objects. These are all the three GOP setups. One of the ATP rule, one of the sourcing rule, and then one of the assignment set. All of them has to be collected. And then I will now go to the supply planning data, and then I will now collect the on end also. Because we already collected on end, it doesn't matter. But even then, I'm not collecting on end also. So this will not take some time. So once when this is complete, then the complete setups of the back to back make is complete. Now, thank you, Mansar. So go there. So <laughs> I will now go there. Sir, click on submit. So we had to wait for this concurrent to complete now. <laughs> So this will now run faster when compared to the previous one. So 790 is the concurrent which is now running for collecting the data set. So let us now wait for some time till it gets completed. Worker to delete stage data was a previous concurrent. Fine. The, the collection doesn't, 790 is running. Fine. Let us now wait for it to get completed up to what happens, worker to delete stage data. Now that almost all the load is now complete, so it is now doing only the statistic collection. So we can assume that almost uh, the collection is now complete. So what we did is we created the item, we have the on hand, and then we have collected it. We have created the structure, we have created the work definition, and then afterwards we made a collection, and then uh, finally we made the GOP setups, and then also performed the collection. Actually. So once when all these activities are completed, so our all the setups for the back to back make is now complete. So, go there. so let us now log out and log in and then create a sales order. We are now ready for the creation of sales order. So I believe it's completed. Click on it. Let me sign out and sign in. Sign from sign in. So once when these things are completed, you know, sign out and sign in. And then let us now go and then create our first sales order for the back-to-back -back make. Remember, we have an on and a five. So let me log in. So you're logging in now. <clears throat> and then we'll now go to the order management and then order management. And then we will now create a sales order for this. <laughs> go there. So we'll now go to the order management. Go to the order management. And then go to the order management. So let us now create a sales order. So since it is a vision, we have got access to multiple BUs. So the first activity is to what? Choose our BU and then choose our customer. <clears throat> choose our BU and then choose our customer. Go there. So click on the create order. So we are going to create order. Click on the create order. So we are going to choose our BU and then our customer. So click on create order. Now go there. So since the vision, it has got access to multiple BUs. So depending upon the profile setting which you have seen already, now, right? So all the data access which you are given is only for one BU. So here vision has been uh, made it for multiple BUs. Right? <coughs> go there. So drop it down. I will now go there. So click on it. I will now choose what US one business unit. Years on the unit, and then afterwards, having done this, we'll go there. We'll choose the computer services and levels. So, let us choose the computer services and levels. <clears throat> if on the four characters, if it is not coming, reduce one character, it will not come. Reduce one character, it will not come. So, it is a computer service and levels. Since we are doing it for the first time, it is not taking a longer time actually to sense the sub uh, customer now. And you can see on the left hand side, the US dollar is coming. So, this is basically a <clears throat> default setup on the vision actually. So computer services and needles of the customer actually. So let me wait for the customer to come. So I will not put otherwise four characters now. <clears throat> sometimes three, sometimes four will be coming fine. The four characters will not come. So once when you wait, 
you will now see the build customer, build account, etc., etc. will be getting populated. And then afterwards, make a check on the strategy, pricing strategy and cycle. Now go there and then make a check of the pricing strategy and cycle. So go there. So everything has got populated. Go to actions and then go to view pricing strategy and segment. It will not show you your pricing strategy and pricing segment. So Vision is using the corporate segment group one and then corporate pricing strategy group one. Right? The one is using fine is okay. I will not go there and then populate the item. So we are not populated the items price actually. Fine T01 01. Item price is not populated. So we'll not go there and then populate the items price actually. The selling price of the item we are doing. T0101 and then make a search now. <laughs> It is not a T01, I think it is a T01 only. And T01 drum is the one. And T01. And then choose the drum. Not 01. So T01 drum is the one which you are going to choose. I will not choose the drum. Not so T01 drum is the one. And then the item is not having any price. So let us now set up the price and then bring it over here. So click on that. Item is not having a price. And then item is not having any price at all. And once again, <clears throat> item is not having a price. So what you do is I will now go to this place and click on plus. And then I will not go there. I will not right click on the duplicate. Right click on the duplicate. Let us now set up the price for this item actually. <clears throat> Let us set up the price for this item. This one, what happens? It has already got added actually. It must have got added now. <clears throat> this line is the line is already got added now. So let us now go there, but there is no price at all. We will not go to this place. I will not go to the order management. I will go to the pricing administration now. I will not go to the order management. I go to the pricing administration. Let us now set up the price. So Vision is using one corporate segment price list one. Fine. Click on it. I will now set up the price for all items. Go to the manage price list. <coughs> I will now set up the price for all items actually. So go to this place. And then let us now query this one. Manage price list. I will now say corporate. Corporate the one. So corporate the one and then search for it. So corporate the one. So let me search for it. Corporate segmental price list the one. So go there, click on it. Corporate segment price is the one. Click on it. So corporate segment price is the one which I click on it. Go to the place. I will now go to the all items now. Click on the all items. And go to the all items now. So click on plus and then I will now give a price plus. So I will not go there. For units are measure of each, right? Each and every units are measure must have a separate price. And each will give a trade charge for all items. So whichever is having a each price, I will not go to give a price of one dollar. So click on trade charge. I will go down. Right? I will not make it as one dollar. I will not allow manual discourse. And then here what happens? I will not give a start day yesterday. And click on it. I will not put the start date yesterday. And that's it. Fine. So we are now create the price on the corporate segment price is seven dollars. This need not be collected. Right. Whenever you change an attribute on the item or otherwise, whenever you make a prices, this is not the benefit. We go there. I will not here. The price is not coming on the line now. Fine. Line is not having any price now. You go to actions and then go to reprice order. So once when you reprice order, so the item's price will be coming automatically in this place. <clears throat> we'll go to the first line there. The line first one straight and we'll go there. And then have a look at it. So the line first one, it will not show you the price. <laughs> So we are now doing the replacing order. Fine, the price is coming. So let me cancel it, and then I will make a new order. Thank you, I cancel. The price is coming as one dollar. I cancel it. So the price is sensed by the system now. So let me get a new order. So click on create order. We are now going to get. It. I'm not saving the order. I'm not going to drop it down. Go to the place. I will now say use one business unit, and then I will now put the it's called my customer number. Computer service and then the customer. So, so everything will be coming. So let me populate my item drum. So all the details will come that. So I will now say it's a T01 right? underscore DR and then give it a drum. So once we give it a drum, it will not show the quantity of one at the price of one dollar. <coughs> it will not show you the price also as one dollar <coughs> because the price has been set on the player now. So click on that. <coughs> So it is not sensing for the item now. Right? So the item is not getting sensed. And then give it a it will be coming. So we are waiting for the item to get populated from the line level now. <clears throat> the line level with the price. So it is saying it is in stock. 
So we have a stock of five. That is why it is not showing in stock. So the in stock, and then if you go for 12 quantities, no, fine, go for 12 quantities. So I give a tap. It will now say a low inventory availability of five is there. Because we have it. So this information will be available only for a back-to-back -back enabled items. Otherwise, for a normal item, it will now say data not retrieved actually. So we already have a stock of five. And then the customer is ordering for 12. So the remaining seven will be interfaced to manufacturing. So click on add. So the line is not getting added. So the low inventory availability of five is coming. We are now adding it. Now. Thank you for that. So once we add it, what happens will be added. And then normally you go to the second tab region and then it will not provide a supply here. In this place, what happens in supply? It will not provide a warehouse. But for a back-to-back -back item, this is not required at all. You can directly submit because the back-to-back -back GOP setup says that you make it at a 002, bring it to 002, and then ship it to the customer from 002. Everything has been set on the assignment set. So no need to independent anything at all. Fine, click on submit. So we are now submitting the sales order. Which what happens? This sales order will now start to progress on the do workflow for a back to back make actually. And click on submit. So for a back to back make, it will now start to progress on the sale. <clears throat> so you have to wait for some time because this we are now in this instance. I'm now submitting a sales order for the first time actually. So it's not taking a longer time now. So this is now confined. 97408 is the order number. Fine, click on OK now. 97408 is the order number. Let us now switch the fulfillment here. So it is now going to progress on the work to actually. So go to actions and then here what happens? Switch to fulfillment view. So we are now switching to the fulfillment view now. Go to the place. And then we will now click on the do number and then have a look at the progression of the orchestration. Is the do number. So we are now on the fulfillment lines. I am now clicking on the do number. It will now show you the progression. And it will also show you the do which has been triggered by this one. So the vision has got a default do. So that will be getting triggered actually automatically. The default do will be getting triggered. It is what custom do GSEE 360 order fulfillment generic clauses is on fire. Schedule. So after the scheduling is complete, it is no more going to be reserved. Since the geo made up, it will say request orchestration of supply will be the next activity. And click on submit now. Now wait for the what happens? The scheduling is to get completed now. So once the scheduling is completed, it will say request orchestration of supply will be coming. Refresh, refresh. And then the scheduling has started. <coughs> So we had to wait for this to complete. The reserve will not change to what? Request orchestration of supply once when the scheduling is complete. Okay, it will be changing to what? Request orchestration of supply. Started. So we're gonna wait for some time now. Now it is scheduled actually, a tick mark has come. Now the reserve will not change to what? Request orchestration of supply. If you give a refresh now, if you give a refresh, the reserve will not change to request orchestration of supply because of GOP. Right? So the request orchestration of supply has started actually. Right? The request orchestration of supply, it has started. So once when this completed, the pass will be triggered. Right? There will not be any pass because we don't have any problem because we have a planning uh, time frame as 50 days. And so it will never get passed at all. Right? It will be considered for a supply, supply chain planning demand supply balancing. So request orchestration supply has started now. So we'll wait for it. So afterward, the pass will start. So once when this is completed, fine, supply request completed has come. Fine. Now the pass is going to start. It's now coming as not started. So we'll wait for it. The pass will start. The pass will not have any problem because we don't have any problem in this. Fine. And then the geo body on the manage order parameters has been set to more. Fine. So that what happens, it will not be raising any problem if there is a geo body. <laughs> so it has now started. So it will be getting completed now. Fine. So that will now progress to what? A wedding <coughs> in the second. So this data, the pass is complete. Now ship back to back is now going to start. And the pass is now completed. Ship back to back is completed. Now it will now progress to what? A wedding shipping actually. It will now go to the wedding shipping. Thank you for the question. Now we can go and then see on the SCO area now. It will now go to the wedding shipping. It will now go to the wedding shipping. So it will now go to a wedding shipping. So a wedding shipping is there. So now we'll go there. We'll not go to the SCO area. Fine, click on that now. We'll not go to the SCO area and then have a look at it. So click on the home icon. Fine, click on the home icon. <clears throat> and then here, what happens? You go to what? Uh, we will not go to uh, supply chain execution now. Fine. So I will not go to the supply chain execution. This is supply chain planning now. <clears throat> supply chain execution is here. Fine, click on it. I will not go to the supply orchestration now. Fine, click on the supply orchestration. So in the supply orchestration, we will have got interface. So this also can be seen over here now. Fine, click on it. So if you click on refresh now, fine, no done. If you go to the fulfillment area, fine, click on refresh now, and refresh, go on and refresh it. Oh God, the screen is now locked. Fine. 974, the screen is not, not responding. So go to the fulfillment lines. So click on the fulfillment lines, and then here you go down the bottom, 
you know saying go to the bomb and the go to the supply bills so here the supply order number has to come so it takes some time actually to update it actually and fix this problem so the supply order number has to come you can also see the supply order number is coming so it will take some time for the system to update actually so in the meantime we can even go to the sco area and then see so i will now click on it and click on the start this task list and then go to the manage supply lines and then query for the item let me go on and query for the item supply manage and supply lines so in the sales order it will take some time to update it now i will not say item starts with i will say item starts with and then i will not say it is a t01 dr so i'm not starting on this no point click on search so we are going to search for this one so you will not find Right. Your line will be coming now. It is not taking some more time actually. So we had to wait for what happens the, the system to sense this thing. So click on refresh. It is not taking a longer time for the system to sense actually. So once it is sensed, what happens? The supply order number will be visible over there. Supply order. I don't know, wait for some more time. Now the supply order number has got created. So the supply paper is already supplied. And then the bottom you are having those. So is the one. And click on refresh now. Click on refresh. Go that one. So now we will now go, go to the manage supply lines and then query. And the supply order has now just got created actually. It has now got created. And supply order number is got created. So we will now go to the manage supply lines and then make a search here. Right click on search. You know, searching for it. So now you will now find the supply order has come. Right? It has got split in two lines. One is what on end, and then one is a make action. So the sales order also will be getting split into two. Right? So click on done and then come out of it. So the sales order also will be the total will be getting split into two. So click on done again. <clears throat> come to the main area. The waiting city. So both that good actions and I'm going to switch to the new. So it has to split into two lines now. Fine. One is on hand or five, and then one is what you have to ma manufacture someone more. Not coming. So click on the order orchestration number. You will have it. <clears throat> so here, if you expand it, you will see where it has got two lines. Now. Oh God, I think it's coming actually. So it is not showing now. Fine. So click on done, and then main area will now have it. It's there. Two has got split or not. Click on it. You will see whether it has got split or not. You go to the place. So the five is now, but in this area, it is not showing you clearly on and and then make. Right? So if you go up and then up, see on and strike and then make is seven. So go to this place. It is also normally usually uh, displayed on the sales order also. Right? Line has got split into. So I remember both of them are having a same order number. Score number is same for both for the, both the lines. Actually. The score numbers two nine one one two nine one one the two zero one one sorry. <clears throat> so the numbers are same actually. So it is ending in 20115. The number is the same. If you go there and have a look at it. So this is one kind of expanded and then see the, the drum is the one. So it is no reserved. This five call is a reserved actually. Whereas these seven awaiting work order creation actually. It's now saying no, it is not awaiting work order creation. So once when the work order is created, you will go to the execution documents, you will now see the work order also coming up on this So it is not combined. So since it is for the first time you are triggering it, it is not taking a longer time actually. So click on it, click on refresh. Right? Once when the work order is ready, it will not put a tick mark here. It will be putting a tick mark over here. So click on refresh, refresh, and see now. Right? And the execution documents also will come. So if you go to the make recommendation, you can now see the make recommendation. By make and transfers of the three recommendations given by the URL, this thing now, right? by supply chain orchestration scope process now. So the document number also will be coming. So it wait for it to complete. <clears throat> so it is awaiting work order creation. Right? So once when the work order is created, it will be interfaced to Atlanta manufacturing unit for manufacturing it actually. So click on this. In the meantime, what happens? go there. We, I normally see a split on this now, but it's not visible yet. I don't know why it's so. <clears throat> why the line is not got split. So the toll would have got split into two now. Whereas in the case of a transfer, I have seen a clear split actually. Whereas here, what happens? I'm not able to see the split at all. Maybe the business process could be like this. For a make, it will not get split at all. Maybe. I'm not sure. Click on that one. Whereas in the SCO area, it is not clearly split. The SCO area is not clearly split. So in the main area, what else is not showing the one anymore. So in this place, go to the nice supply lines and click on refresh now. Right? So once when you refresh it, I have to have the document number, the work order number, WO underscore 002 underscore running number starting on 1000. 
So if you go to the orchestration plan, you can now see a tick mark will be coming now. Fine, the work order is created. Then it will also be reserved. And then work order upon completion will be saying. And then once when you ship it, the fulfillment will be getting completed. So this is the way the scope will be doing it. Actually. So work order creation, <coughs> awaiting for work order creation. SCO is basically an adapter. It, 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 it senses the input demand and then matches it to an appropriate output of buy, make, or transfer. Fine. In this case, the, the, uh, the assignment set is now making it as a make, actually. So because of which, what happens? Uh, this is now interfaced into manufacturing for making it. Actually. So in the meantime, what happens? We'll now right-click and then duplicate. We'll now go on and have a look at the work order. We'll now see whether the work order is really created or not. Fine. Sometimes on the SCO area, as well as in the sales order, the additions may be late now. You will now go to the work execution and see whether any work order is now created or not. I'll go there. So click on the home icon. I will now go to the supply chain execution now. So go to this place. I will now go to the supply chain execution. I will now go to the work execution. So previously we did everything on the work definition. Now we go to the work execution, then we'll not try to execute it. <coughs> so go there tomorrow. I will now see what happens everything is coming. We will now see go to this place for that. So unreleased is three now, fine. That is, uh, I am in the zero zero to org only, fine. Well, now unreleased is three. Fine. If you click on the unreleased, it will not show you. And the main info that itself, what happens? One is saying, the one is ready for it. And then unreleased is three. So they're all yes number, fine. We've not our item at all. No, no our item. No, no. So we've not our item actually. So maybe the work order creation is now getting delayed actually. Click on it. <coughs> we'll now go there. So manage work order is the one fine click on it. You'll see whether the work order is not created or so click on it. You'll go there. So work order number is not known. Item is known to us. Fine. Is that E01 underscore drum is the one. Fine. Go ahead. Then query for item is also. You'll see whether any work order has been created or not. Fine. Come, 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 come. See, it has to come. Awaiting schedule. Go there, it has come. So the work order number 0021052 is now created. This is for seven quantities actually. It is already created. So go there. So go there. Tomorrow. I will now click on the hyperlink of it. I will now click on the hyperlink of it. <coughs> and then we are now going to release it. Production. We can even release it. <coughs> so we will now perform a release actually. So the work order, work order is now coming and the unreleased status of the manufacturing. It is already, status is released actually. So it is now released also. So we can very well move, perform the move transaction on this one. We will now go there. So we will now perform a move transaction on this release one. Fine, initially it will be unreleased. So it creates a release one. If you go there and then click on refresh now, fine, we have to have a tick mark on the work order as well as reserve also. Ah, it's not yet updated, but it has already been interfaced with this now. It has already been interfaced to manufacturing. So if you click on refresh, it will now say work order, awaiting work order creation. This is not yet updated in the SCO area. Here also what happens, you can see in the my, in this one, and go to the actions and go to what? Switch to fulfill view. <clears throat> so here it is already there. And the, the supply order number is there. So there won't be any other update. Okay? But I thought that this will be having what a yeah, split of the line, but that is not visible actually. <clears throat> Somebody please update me about the, whereas in the buy and then transfer, the line is getting split. Whereas for the make, it is not getting split. I don't know why it's so. Okay. Goods partially available is coming. Very good. So we have a partial goods. That means what? Five quantities is available as what goods available. And then this is the waiting supply. It's good. So at least here, what happens? The sales order is not going it. But toll is now as an intact only. Goods is available, and the next one is available. So goods are partially available. So we'll now go to the work order. So everything is ready. So let us now go to the review dispatch list, and then we'll now complete the operation. Thank you, the cancel. <coughs> I will now go to the review dispatch list. It's already released on the work area. So go there. So W00021052 is the work order. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. So click on that. I will now go to the review dispatch list and then move the assembly on the shop floor. We are going to move it. Go to the review dispatch list. We are going to move the assembly in the shop floor. <coughs> go to the review dispatch list on the execution fraction. So I will now say item is what? I will now say T01. And then give it that one. Otherwise, let us go drum. And then what happens? They make a search. Now search on the review dispatch list. It will now show you the work order on the release. That's what I will now say. Uh, I will not say all status now. Fine, status is all. So click on search. <coughs> we are searching for it. It is already released now. So uh, work area is not this area. Fine, I will not say all work areas. Work area is not laptop area. I will not query on all work area. Fine, our area is also getting complete launch. So click on search now. We are searching for it on all areas now. Fine, all all is the one. 
still is all thank you on search once when you search for it it will be ready for manufacturing actually so it is not ready for manufacturing it goes that point i will not go to the place find it expand it i'll not show you this one <clears throat> go there so click on it. i will now quick complete operation number 10 fine there got three operations actually is operation number 10 fine click on quick complete you going to complete expand it and then complete quick complete <clears throat> So we are completing it. You have completed what happens? The quantity of seven for operation number ten. No, fine. There is nothing but building and cutting action. The next operation is twenty. That we are going to do the perform the building action. It's not done. So go there. It's not done. Go there. So here expand it. No, fine. So the twentieth operation is ready actually. Fine. Tenth is now complete. Fine. Expand the twentieth. This is now complete. So the twentieth operation is ready. Go there. Go there. So the twentieth operation is now ready actually. <clears throat> so ex no, the, no, this is the expand. Fine. Quick complete it. And click on quick complete. We can even reject it or complete with details also. We can do. Fine, click on the complete details. There, we can even change the quantities actually. If you go for complete details, you can even change the quantity. We can even write a comment on this now. Fine. So go to the backflush materials. So materials will be backflush from the inventory actually. So the welding rod is required. Fine. If you want to have additional also, we can add it. Additional materials apart from the normal required over there. Not as another. So click on next now. Fine, click on next. You go there. Auto transaction resource now. Fine, resources also getting better. So if the item is the job is going to be costed, all the resources will be costed actually. Is all so save and close by which what happens? We can even add or change anything. Instance of a resource also can be provided during work with the details actually. It is not complete. So the twentieth operation is also complete. So twentieth operation is also complete. The thirtieth is now ready for it. Fine, expand it, and then it is now completed. So you can see in the top what happens? No complete. If you click it, what happens? It will be complete with details. It will be getting completed and then it will be getting inventorized also. And click on the complete details. The thirtieth operation I'm going to complete details. So by which what happens? You go there. So click on next. You go to the backflush. If you want, you can then change. Fine. Click on next. Fine. You can also quick complete also. Complete details. I'm not giving it. Fine. Auto transact resources. Fine. Click on next now. <clears throat> and then finally, it does not go to the inventory. Fine. For the final operation only, the inventory will be coming. So here it will be going to the completed sub inventory. Fine. Click on seven close. So the item gets inventorized. So the item will be getting inventorized. So once when the item gets inventorized, it will be automatically updating the sales order that what happens, the, the total quantity is available. No need to do anything at all. Upon completion, this itself will be doing it. Fine. You have completed the quantity of seven operation, as thing, and, and then it has gone to the completed sub inventory. Fine. Completed the work order. <clears throat> it is not completed actually. And the operation number 30 to sub inventory completed. So the completed is sub inventory, so it has not gone there. So if you go to the manage orders, you will see what happens. It will not say goods available, not more partially available. I click on that right now. So it will not take some time for the system to sense the goods availability. So it will not take some time for the goods partially available. But so in the meantime, what happens? We will not try to ship it now. Click on pick and ship. We will not do it. So the goods are available now. It's available. So goods partially available is coming. Through. So we will not go to the manage supply lines. Here again, what happens? We click on refresh now. Fine. It will not take some longer time now. Fine. Awaiting work order creation. Work order itself is complete now. Fine. In production. Now it has gone to introduction now only. Find the document number has come. Find the work order number has come. Is the reservation number actually? So if you go to the orchestration plan now, what happens? The reservation is complete. Work order is also complete. This thing work also will be coming. So once when you finally ship it, the fulfillment also will be getting completed. So updation on the SCO area is very late, and then on the sales order also it's somewhat late. I click on the question. Here also what happens? It has to say goods available, not partially available. So click on the search. So now you see it has come. Goods is available. The two lines has now become one. The total quantity is no goods is available. So let us now go there and then we will know what happens. We are not completely. So let us now do the pick and ship of it now. Thank you for it. We will not perform the pick and ship. So you will not go to the place. Thank you for it. I will not go to the star icon and then I will not go to the inventory. I will go to the inventory overview and then let us now perform the sales order pick and then ship. <coughs> so we are going to perform the sales order pick and ship. So click on it. You will not go to the shipments. Fine. Click on the shipments now. <coughs> So click on it. We are not going to make one ship. So go to the place and I will not go to the shipments and shipments. And then here <clears throat> I will not go to the manage shipment lines and then let us now perform the shipment. So go to the manage shipment lines. So this is the area. <clears throat> go to the place. And the order number is what? I will not put the order number. 97408 is the order number. Go to the place. 979408. And go to the and then make it as before now. Make it as before. And then click on it. Click on search. Here, what happens? The refresh and start order promising server is not required at all anymore from 20 to D. Fine. That is not required at all. So we normally used to do it. Fine. Collection is more than sufficient. No more refresh and start is required. So I must be in the appropriate order. Change order. 
it is on the 001 or it is not showing you and change out to 002 now 002 and then I click on it mark. I mean the 002 R 002 so go there so it's not showing you 001 now fine so click on it. Uh, now go to the shipments line, go to the manage shipment lines. Then go there. I will not here, I will not change it to 001. I will not put this number as what 97408. It is a 97408. I will not make it as what before and then make a search. Shift to So click on search now. See whether it says it. Right now, it is, here also it has changed actually. The top also has changed. So now it will now sense there's a number now. So let us now perform a pick and then afterwards finally ship it actually. So by which the back to back make, receive, and then ship are all getting completed actually. We are now going to perform a pick now. It is a sales order pick now. So click on search. So it is now going to the next screen where I will now perform the pick release. The pick release will now perform a pick release followed by a pick confirm, which has been fully explained. And go to actions and then go to pick release. So we are going to perform a pick release. So the pick release will now perform a pick release as well as the pick confirm in which what happens sir? a pick wave movement request will be created and then that will be allocating the material so we are already available and the concurrent is now running for it now and so, so the pick wave movement request will now allocate the material as well as the pick confirm will now confirm it also so the finally the status will now go to stage right if you go there give a save and close so the status will be going to stage you know ready to release now the line status will now go to stage right so the line status will now go to staged so once when this company it will now become eligible for a ship confirmation actually. In the meantime, what happens? We'll now go there. Fine. I'll know what happens. We'll now see. Ready to release coming. Expand it and we'll see. Triple X. So click on search now. <clears throat> so once we search for it, the line status will be staged. Right? There's no stage. So click on the shipment number. Fine. Go there. So there are two shipment numbers are there. Fine. Both of them are allocated the same shipment number only. It is now getting coupled actually. So the line is now getting what happens uh, clubbed with the previous one. The line is now getting clubbed with the previous one. So initially, what happens? It came as only a, uh, it must have come only as a one line. I'm not sure about it. So in the what's called uh, in your uh, normal back to back buy and then back to back transfers. So uh, there we can even separately ship five. That we we have seen it now, and we are able to ship separately five. Now what happens? Uh, the system by default is now clubbing everything into one shipment number. So. You know, waiting for it to complete now. Fine. The sales order also not got what I was split actually. So it's not clubbing into one shipment number automatically. Maybe there also it may be possible. I'm not very sure about it. So make a check of it now. So both actually what? So both of them are now the same shipment number. So five plus seven, the whole quantity will be getting shipped actually. So go to ship confirmation. We are not ship confirming it. So nine is So it's not showing you both the numbers now. So both the numbers. So go that to it. It'll not say give you a warning on weight and volume. This is required only for your. Transportation management actually, and otherwise it's not expected. Click on and accept this warning and then go ahead now. So it will be finally shipped actually. So now the shipment activity is now happening now. So once when it is shipped, the same shipment advice will be running. Both of them are shipped now. Right, right click on that. Here itself, what happens? You can go there and then look at what happens. Look at the monitor process. So the SSA will now be what happens if you go to the monitor process. Now SSA will be running. SSA is responsible for what happens updating your sales order actually. The sales order gets updated. And click on it. The sales order will be getting added. So go to the place. Right? You know, refresh it and see. Manage shipment interface is not coming. So the manage information in ship interface is the parent concurrent. This is going to trigger the send shipment interface. This manage shipment interface will be triggering or spawning the child concurrent also. So we'll now wait for the send shipment interface to complete. So once when it is completed, we'll go there. Click on it. <coughs> so it's not running. So the send shipment advice is responsible for what happens, interfacing into order entry. So once when it's completed, you can now see the order line will be status is shipped. Click on the The line will be coming to order status is shipped. Right? So we have to wait for the send shipment address to complete. That will be responsible for doing it. And then it will now be pushing the data automatically into the interface area. It will be pushing into the interface area of AR actually. So once it is done, then you can now see that it will be shipped. The line status will go to shipped actually. It will be going to ship. And then invoice will now start. It will now go to the awaiting billing. Invoice process will now start and then it will now go to the awaiting billing. So awaiting shipping, it will be going to ship. So we'll now wait for the SSA to get completed now. SSA has to complete. So if once an SSA is completed, 
you see when SSA when it is now still running. So if this is completed, but when the sales order will be getting updated. So this is responsible for interfacing your shipping execution to order entry. Once when it is completed, so the sales order will now go to the shipping status. Okay. So this completes your back-to-back -back make. Fine. We have now created a sales order. We have through SCO area. If you go to this place, fine. Whether now it will now say production complete actually. Fine. If you click on refresh, now fine. The production that got completed. Work order completion. The tick mark has also completed. So work order is complete actually. Work order is completed. And then once when the shipment is completed, it will now say fulfilled actually. In the SCO area, you can now see this is what fulfilled actually. Work order is complete. And then once when the fulfilled, once when the shipping is completed, it will now become fulfilled. Click on refresh. And also awaiting shipping, <clears throat> it has to go to ship to me. So still it's not showing what it is because that concurrent running for the first time it is not taking a longer time actually. Yes. So since shipment advice is not taking a longer time actually. <clears throat> so once it is completed. So this will also update your score area also. This will also update your score area. <clears throat> so we're waiting for this to complete. So the management for times also is it becoming as what fulfilled actually. So the SCO is to is a basically an adopter. The adopter will now sense the incoming demand and then map it to an appropriate buy output or a make output or a transfer output. And then it will now see to it that the activity gets fulfilled actually. That is the response to your SCO actually. Supply chain orchestration. Yes, click on refresh button. It has to move as for shipping. So once when it's shipped, what happens? The billing will now start. So go to the monitor process and make a search for it. Oh God, it's taking a long time. <clears throat> so since these things are getting run for the first time, what happens? It has to set up everything properly. And then it does. Even though the other things have got succeeded, SSA is it to succeed. If SSA fails, what you do is you run the manage ship and interface again. And then this will again spawn the ship and ship, ship, send ship and interface. So the parent concurrent, you have to, so you have to run this concurrent. This is a master concurrent actually, master program. So if this fails because of some reasons or other, then we can even you set right all the problems and then again run the management shipment interface. So that way it works out. So click on refresh now. <clears throat> we are refreshing it, refreshing it. Go there, go to the manual orders and see whether it has sensed the SSA is the output now. One of the SSA outputs, it has to become also shipped and then the invoice will not start. Oh God, <clears throat> taking a longer time. So now the send shipment advice has got succeeded. We'll go to the manage orders and then you know, click on the <coughs> It has to go to what? Ship right. So that is responsible for what happens, updating it. Now it has shipped. So the invoice has started and then once when the invoice has started, it will not go to awaiting billing. So all these activities are completed. So if you go to this place, fine, go the refresh in the supply chain area. So the fulfillment also would have got completed. So the line status also will be getting updated to fulfilled actually. So once when it is updated to fulfilled. So the SCO activity is now completed. Now we only have to what? Build the customer actually. But wait and then build the customer. The fulfillment activity is not yet complete. So let us now refresh and then have a look at it now on the status of it. Click on refresh and have a look at it. So it have got fulfilled actually. Yeah, it has got fulfilled. So the activity is now fulfilled. So if you go there and then have a look at it, it would have gone to even awaiting shipping. It would have gone to awaiting shipping. The invoice has started and then it will not go to awaiting shipping. So awaiting billing rather, awaiting billing. So this completes a back-to-back -back make, receive, and then ship, and then pushing it up to AR actually. So even on the supply area, what happens? Really so let us now try to meet on some other uh, session and then see the other ones. I hope that this session is interesting for you. Fine. You can write to me at nana.app60 at gmail.com. And then I'm also selling the records. Fine. I'll just show you my share my screen. So you can even buy my records at this place, actually. <clears throat> Oracle nana.com. Fine. Then slash INVPO. Oracle nana.com slash INVPO. There I'm selling my records. So one, when you buy my records from any of the three, so I'll be adding you to my group also, my Telegram group. And then you can even discuss with the, my past students for any clarification. So they will also help you in a lot of things. Actually. So this way it works. 
So my website is oraclenano.com slash IMEP. I hope that uh, you will be getting a very good input. I mean, my coverage is always in-depth. And then it will now give you a lot of insight into so many business processes. Right? So happy learning. And then now, bye for now from my side, actually. So bye. <laughs>